Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for tuning in to a special edition of the Engine Room Podcast brought to you by Token Metrics. Uh, we've got a guy with us. You might recognize him from an earlier episode of the podcast. It's Mr. Chase Allred from TokenMetrics.com. Chase, what's up, man? Happy to see hey, you. Hey, Dylan. Good to see you, too. How's it going? It's going all right. It's going all right. Um, well, I want to thank you for sharing a little bit of time with us today. The name of our game for this episode of the podcast is to learn a little bit about the history of Bitcoin. I know that this is something you're paying quite a bit of attention to with your work at Token Metrics. And uh, I, I thought uh, an interesting question to kick it all off might be, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Uh, that's something I think we wish we all knew. Um, if I were to take a gander, I would say it's not a single person. Uh, it almost had to have been a group of people. Uh, I, a lot of people think the same thing about Shakespeare. Um, Mm. But I think it's a group of people probably who were formerly cypherpunks. Uh, the cypherpunks was like a cryptography group online, sort of renegade, uh, renegade, somewhat anarchist, um, libertarian view of the world, sort of people who are very uh, forward looking in terms of how they viewed where the internet was going and where I, I kind of think about them as like the first punk rockers on the internet that's a great cypher yeah, punks. these kind of like like badass guys and girls who who were like you can't touch my email you can't touch my money we're gonna do this our way yeah so they they predicted many many things in terms of government oversight um corporations owning all of our data they they basically saw all of this coming uh in the 90s, early 90s, they tried to make their own digital payment systems back then. Um, and then presumably, I, I would gander that one of them was committed to the dream and became Satoshi Nakamoto, one or a few of them. Yeah, uh, if we were going to get even more specific about the identity question of Satoshi Nakamoto, which is perhaps the least important question, by the way. Um, but uh, one thing that I've heard pretty consistently is that this is probably somebody in the United or, or a team in the United Kingdom. Lots of British spellings in the white paper. And uh, I've got I heard from one. Well, I'm thinking of an old interview with John McAfee, but uh, so I was about to call him a reputable source. Who knows how reputable he is? Rest his soul. Lots of love to John McAfee, but he he knows how to tell a story. And uh, he was so convinced this is a British person. This is somebody in the UK. Have you heard anything like that? Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, the British spellings in the white paper and... Um when Satoshi was still active on message boards and developing on the Bitcoin blockchain itself, there were a few, uh, there were many instances where he did use um, British spellings, you know, uh, color, C-O-L-O-U-R. Um, yeah, yeah. This, that, and the other. It's definitely possible that one of those people was British and others were not. Uh, there's been a lot of also looking back at the times this supposed Satoshi was posting, um, which is somewhat useful, but also knowing the computer genius type, they tend to be up at all hours of the day and night. So it's, mm -hmm. there's some, some uh, belief that he was maybe in Japan based on that or living in Japan at the time. Um, but again, it's very hard to just go off that because someone like Satoshi is probably working around the clock. What was the last public facing message that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto ever wrote or sent? What was the last public word from the person himself or herself? So that was back in 2013. Um, he posted on the same message board that he was always posting on and he essentially disappeared with all of his now 70 billion dollars worth of bitcoin at today's prices uh still in his wallet and he's still there to this day 
Yeah, yeah. So what do you think happens if and when Satoshi ever moves those original coins? It's quite the haul. What's the, what, how many coins are we talking about here? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. I just it's, know that it's a huge it's, number. If I feel, I'm afraid if those coins ever moved at all, the price would crash. Yeah, yeah. It would, it would definitely scare a lot, a lot of people. Um, you know, there are some people who actually believe that the U.S. government is Satoshi or the, the government made it. I've heard yeah, this theory. Yeah. Uh, Pretty fun theory, in my opinion. <laughs> I've, it's a great movie. I've also heard people say, <laughs> I think the government made it because obviously the government does have some incentive to want to know where all money is moving back and forth on the blockchain. Um, but I've also heard people say it's too smart for the government to have made it. It's too good of a night. It's too innovative. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I don't know. I either way, it's a pretty interesting story. This is you know th this is economic uh, economic uh, excuse me Nobel Prize for economics worthy stuff, and we don't know who to give the award to. <laughs> and it seems like the person or people who are actually responsible, they don't want you to know who they are. Um, I have this idea that every secret eventually comes out. Do you think there will ever be a time where we know? retroactively who or what satoshi is that's a really good question um what what would it take for that to become uh, as known as the day's weather the true identity of satoshi what 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 is that hypothetical day like do you think if we were to find out my hope would be that it would be on the deathbed of whoever satoshi is um, i i uh -huh. think if satoshi came out tomorrow i probably wouldn't believe him I, <laughs> I i don't think i would i would i would i love hanging on to the mystery and i think that's part of what draws people to me. yeah it's a pretty good little genesis story here genesis works at a few levels there's like a religious element to it and also i'm thinking of genesis blocks the earliest blocks oh, of Bitcoin. There you go. There you go. um yeah within within the world of religion and things that you believe very firmly in bitcoin checks a lot of the same boxes yeah. it's got this mystical origin story we don't know all the details but we know enough we know enough to know that it can change the world I... so <laughs> it's a it's it's a 10 ton idea and it's kicked off a huge uh you know we don't we don't have any other cryptocurrency today if not for the fact that Bitcoin came first and really set the precedent. It seems like uh, one of the first five things people learn about Bitcoin and also crypto is... Satoshi is the creator and we yeah, don't know who it is. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's a good story. It's a good story. Well, let, let's, uh, you know, it's a short podcast. Let's, let's wrap this up here with, on this note. What's the most interesting thing you've learned about Bitcoin as you dug into all this research? What's one thing that you're taking away and like, wow, I didn't know this before, and now uh, now I know X. Well, the overarching theme is always Bitcoin is dead, right? Um, there's there's some statistic out there where Bitcoin is dead has been a headline somewhere online in real places and you know very reputable media outlets. Bitcoin is dead over and over and over. That's been the narrative. But it has it still hasn't been killed somehow. There has been one major hack um, back in 2012, I believe. There was a major hack. Other than that, Bitcoin has lived through it all. Um, it's seen 80, 80 plus percent price corrections. But by and it's really it really comes down to the hands of the people behind it there you talk about diamond hands people who have had bitcoin people whose bitcoin was on mount gox or they somehow got their bitcoin out of mount gox those guys are here to stay um they're ready to, they're yeah, ready yeah. to ride this wave as far as it'll take them yeah yeah here we here we are what 12 years after the fact and no signs of slowing down in fact all signs point to speeding up i well, you heard it from Chase Allred himself. You can't kill Bitcoin. I uh, I met a guy at BTC Miami uh, this year who used the who used the phrase "I got goxed," 
And I was like, you are a legend, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, old school. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Anyway, Chase, thanks for joining us on this short episode of the podcast. Uh, guys, pay attention to Chase. You can read his work on the on the Token Metrics blog. He's got a hand in all kinds of things going around at tokenmetrics.com. And thank you for sharing a little bit of your time with us today. Thank you, Dylan.